Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today we're excited to check out Ghost of the Moor from Tasty Minstrel Games. This is for two to five players. Take about 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages eight plus. And in Ghost of the Moor, you're going to be explorers. You're going to have your little explorer meeples, and they're going to be going through the moor, collecting relics, and trying not to get haunted by spooky ghosts. Uh, this is a roll and move style game, but you're going to have a whole bunch of different meeples you're going to be able to move. So most of the time you're going to have choices on where you're going to land and what you're going to land on. You're also going to have a handy plank along the way, which will kind of act like as a little bridge you'll be able to utilize. It is a light, simple, family weight game, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Ghosts of the Moor. So first and foremost, we have our handy dandy rule book. Uh, it's one giant page, it's really kind of like two pages, uh, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, look at those big old examples right there. Uh, very well done rule booklet, should have you up and running in no time at all. I had no lingering questions whatsoever, and I don't feel like this is the kind of game you'd have to revisit the rule booklet more than once or twice. Big thumbs up on the rule booklet. So in Ghost of the Moor, what you're going to be doing is you're going to try to get the most victory points as you go through this moor right here. You're going to acquire victory points by getting sets of different artifacts like these. The more you have of the different artifacts, the more points you're going to get. If you have five of an artifact, you get 15 points, four, 10 points, three, six points, two, three points, and you just have one, you get one points. You also are going to get bonus points for being able to escape the moor fastest. And the first five people to go out and get out of the moor are going to get some bonus points right there. Each meeple that gets out uh, will get the top one of these tiles, assuming there's tiles left. Last but not least, you're going to lose points if you leave the moor and you're haunted by the ghost. Oh, the oh so spooky ghost, which are actually kind of cute. Uh, so if you happen to have this ghost at the end of the game, it's going to lose you five points. Very clear iconography there. So let's go over the components. Let's get into the game plan. I'll show you how the game works. So first, everybody's going to get their particular color of meeples. The two colors missing are actually this really cool green color and blue color. So I do like those. And you're going to set up your meeples up top right here. Now, the number of meeples you're going to have up here is dictated by the number of players. The more players you have, the less meeples you are going to have up here. You're going to get the D6 die. It's just a standard D6 die. Nothing fancy here. You're going to set up the board like this, randomly putting two on a whole bunch of these spots right here and then one of these spots right here, and then these spots are all going to be blank. Now, I'm not going to talk about why there's different icons on these just yet. We'll talk about it when we get to it. But let's go ahead, roll the dice, and we'll get the game going. So yellow's going to go. They go. They can move any of their meeples to spaces, but since all their meeples are in the same spot, they're going to move right there. The black would go. They would move, boom, three spaces. They land on a plank. Doesn't mean anything right now. Uh, and white's going to go. They're going to go two spaces. So now it gets back to yellow. They roll the dice and they have a choice now. Do they want to move their, this yellow guy one space or do they want to move this yellow guy one space? You know what? They're going to move, boom, that one, one space. And now it gets back to white. White's going to move five spaces. So you know what? White might go one, two, three, four, five. Now it's to black. Black rolls the dice, they have a five. So they have a choice once again. Do they want to move this guy or do they want to do, move that guy? So now is when I'm going to show you the main mechanism of the game, which is that if you leave a tile and no one else is there, you get to pick up the top, the, uh, the top tile that is on that stack of tiles. So black's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and they now get to pick up the top part of this tile, which would be this plank right here. Now, a plank is not going to get you any points at the end of the game, but it is super useful uh, for when you land on a spot that has nothing on it. And I'll actually play that a little bit later. Now, at that same cost, though, this guy has landed on a ghost, which means that this guy is going to have to pick up a ghost when he leaves there, assuming no one else is there. But since it's so early on in the game, what he could just do is stay on that spot until someone else gets there and then, boop, pop, leave eventually. Uh, and, and it becomes a little bit of a cat and mouse. So you're like, I don't want to leave this spot because I don't want to have to pick up the six. But at the same time, you know, I kind of want to get over here to the Jeep so I can get the six bonus points. And also, there is a way later on in the game with some forward planning to get rid of your ghost, which I'll explain when we get down over here. So who's next? Yellow's going to go two, and yellow would go one, two, and they get to pick up this one. So now, good for them. They have themselves an urn. I have myself an urn because I'm yellow, even though I hate yellow. And I put it right there because I left that spot. Nobody's there. Uh, so we'll go, uh, what is it? White. White goes four spaces. One, two, three, four. 
black goes, black goes two, one, two. So they're just gonna pick up this ghost. Now let's fast forward a little bit. Let's say that the black has somehow landed on, uh, so they're, they're, you know, they landed here somehow. That's the spot they're on. Well, the first thing is they have a choice that they can put their plank underneath them. So this is where the plank comes into play. So if you're allowed to land on a spot that has nothing uh, underneath it, then you can put your plank down there. And when you leave, as long as no one else is there, you'll, you'll also get to pick your plank up, which is a nice little feature as well. But this time he's not going to put the plank there. And why is he not gonna put the plank there? Well, I'll teach you the other biggest rule of the game right now, which is that when it gets back to his turn, black rolls the dice, black rolls of whatever, it doesn't really matter, uh, a one, if you leave a spot and there is nothing there, so right now there's no tiles right here, there's no people right here, you move your space and then you have to discard this symbol that is right there. So in this case, it would be one of these guys, but he doesn't have one of those guys. So if you don't have that particular relic, then what you can do is you can discard one ghost. So in this case, this would be great for him because he would get to discard the ghost and the discard goes all the way to the very end of the line uh, to a spot that is empty. No people and no tiles. So it would go right there. The next thing that gets started, get discarded would go right there. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what if he didn't have a ghost? Let's pretend that he didn't have this ghost right here. Well, then that becomes really bad because when you leave a spot and you do not have that particular relic that the spot needs and you don't have a ghost, then you have to discard two of your other tiles, which is really bad. So he might give up, you know, these two right here, which would really stink for him. He put them right there, and then we continue on our merry way. Anywho, you're going to continue moving all of your meeples, and it's very important that you kind of not linger towards the back. You don't want to be the person all the way in the back, uh, because what eventually will happen is everybody's going to, boom, be getting all their meeples over here. And if you have one guy left back here, they're just going to have to roll the dice and, and deal with it, whatever it is. Because at this point, it just becomes a straight roll and move game. You have to deal with whatever die roll comes up. Uh, but eventually the game board will start to look, you know, something like this with a whole bunch of pieces over on this side because slowly things are going to be getting, having to get discarded. So there'll be a whole bunch of ghosts right at the end of the moor. But once everybody has gotten all their pieces off of the board, you're going to count up your points. So you'll get points for these. And when you are when you do escape the moor, you'll immediately grab the top one right there. You'll grab points for your sex set collection, and then you will lose points for your ghost. And whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. Also, planks don't give you anything. Wah, 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 wah. So use your planks because they won't give you points at the end of the game. Uh, whoever has the most will be the winner of Ghost of the Moor. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Ghost of the Moor from Tasty Minstrel Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, it's very light and very simple. It definitely falls more into the family weight category of games, which is not going to be for everybody. While you can play it as a lighter game night style game, I definitely, uh, I tried it and I was like, no, not for my gaming group. So I would primarily recommend this as a family weight game, unless you're into much, much lighter games, in which case this might be one you want to check out. Also, a couple component issues that I had with this game. Uh, we really were wishing that the board was larger or the meeples were smaller. Because when you get to certain player counts, and I think it's three and four, and you're going to have uh, you know, a whole bunch of different meeples on different spots, it gets to the point where you can't fit more than like three meeples on a spot unless you lay them down on their side. But then you, when you get four or five meeples on a spot, people are going to bump them and be like, oh, wait, where was this meeple? And it becomes annoying. Also, I wish the tiles were smaller as well because... As you progress down the track, you know, the moor gets a little bit skinnier and it becomes somewhat difficult to figure out which way, whether or not you're actually going up or down. You know, we, I constantly had to be like, oh, the track goes like this, not like that. Uh, because at the beginning, it's like, it's a straight line and then it's up and then it's, you know, a couple this way and it's a couple that way. But towards the end, it's just, it's like a little snake and it becomes a lot harder uh, to see which way you were supposed to go. Also... The graphic design on the board definitely, I think, could have been brighter. I understand they were probably trying to go for, like, a spooky ghost theme, but, hey, I'd rather go for a oh, functional game theme. Uh, so that was kind of annoying. I, I wish they would have made the graphic design a little bit better or made the tiles smaller and the meeples smaller. I understand they wanted to fit everything into the box, and they wanted to make it as big as they could while being in the box, but it did become somewhat of an annoyance. I had, I think, three or four times 
when I played it the first time with adults, it was the kind of thing where people were like, uh, I'm going to go right here. We're like, we, y you can't go right there. And they're like, yeah, one, two, three. And we're like, ah! So that is kind of annoying. Um, it's roll and move, which, and, and there is a good deal of luck in this game as well. If you happen to get the six when you really need the six, it's going to be great for you. If you happen to get a one when you really need a six, it's going to be terrible for you. And as the game progresses, it gets more luck based. Now, you could make the argument that you set yourself up by using skill in the early game on where you're going to, you know, move which meeple and when you're going to move which meeple, but it still gets to the point where if you're stuck in the back at the end of the game, you are completely at the whim of the dice. If you're picking up ghosts along the way and it's your only meeple left, I mean, you're, you're just kind of hosed, which is a little bit of a bummer, but as I mentioned, for a family game, kids don't mind that as much as the adults do. Any other cons that I have with the game? You know, I would like a little bit more meat on the bones, or just at least the option for meat on the bones, because this is a very simple game. It's just 100% straight set collection. All the different things are the exact same. You know, the 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 axe is the same number of points as the little relic, and the bone is the same number of points as the urn, and I just wish there was a little bit more, because I do like the plank, and I like the concept of the plank. I would have liked maybe another special ability you could utilize that was super rare that you could only pick up on the board, or maybe some of the things. Uh, just, I wanted some more meat on the bones. It feels like this game could use an expansion. Uh, it, it would really bump this game up a little bit. But moving on to the pros, Ghost of the Moor, I think, is a very, very good family game. And I do want to start off by saying that I brought it into my classroom, and the kids really, really like this game. Like, they were chomping the bits for this one. I think we played it five or six times the first time I brought it into the class. It was just one after the other, after the other, after the other. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. The rule booklet is well done. I taught it to a six-year-old, but I think I could easily teach it to my five-year-old son, and I probably will teach my five-year-old son. Now, that being said, it is going to be one of those games that if you're playing with much younger kids, you're going to have to kind of help them with their turns and be like, well, if you go there, buddy, then there's a very good chance that you could get rid of that ghost you have. And they'd be like, what? Why can't? Oh, because they don't have the symbol. There's Because despite the fact it's a very simple game, as I mentioned in the cons, there's a good deal of interesting choices to make from time to time on which meeples you're going to take. And I really did like that aspect. I also like the cat and mouse aspect that, you know, the race aspect where it's like, well, I really want to go get that six up there. But at the same time, you know, uh, I think I can outweigh you on this relic because, you know, I I'm here and you're here and you're on a ghost over there. So you're not going to move that piece. So maybe if I just sit here long enough, you're eventually going to leave, which means that, hey, I get this, you know, this fourth axe I need or this third urn that I need. And I like that aspect of the game. I also like the fact the game doesn't outstay its welcome. It's pretty snappy. I'd say once you know what you're doing, you're going to you're going to be busting this out in less than 30 minutes. Your first game is probably going to be about 30 minutes because it is really simple roll and move mechanisms uh i i like i like the forward planning in, in this game as well where it's like hmm you know do i i could land on this spot but at the same time i'd much rather land on this spot because i'm probably going to pick up a ghost by the next time i have to move this guy when i and that's way I'll be able to immediately get rid of the ghost as long as nobody gets to that spot. I also like trying to figure out what other people are going to do and kind of, you know, maybe mm, screw them over a little bit. Like it's, oh, you're on that spot. I see you don't have an urn. Well, <laughs> I'm going to land there as well, buddy, because I don't have an urn. And that way you're not going to be able to get rid of your ghost. So I did like that aspect of the game. Uh, but overall, I think it is a good game. I think it's an okay to good game night game. Can I recommend it as a game night game? And I'm going to say no. I can't, unless you were really play lighter stuff. It just, it didn't do enough for me, and it didn't do enough for the people I was playing with. Nobody disliked the game in the adults. Everybody was like, yeah, that was okay, that was good. Uh, I would play that again, but it was also the kind of thing where everybody was like, I would probably never ask that, to have that played. And I do. After I play games with adults on, on game nights, I'm like, all right, would you ever request this game? And no one was wanting to play this game. Um, and I think I'd probably be the same way as well. You know, you could f slot it in as a lightweight filler game, but there's other better lightweight filler games, in my opinion, that I would want to play. Now, as a family game, yes, keeping this game. I am. It's going to go into my collection, my classroom. It's small, which I like a lot as well. I like the artwork. Uh, I like how it's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. It's got rules that I'm never going to forget, which sounds like like it's a dumb thing, but actually, you know, that's that's always a really good thing, especially uh, when you're playing games with kids because their attention span is like, oh, I want to play, I want to play, I forget. I don't want to play anymore. Uh, so yeah, in the end, Ghost of the Moor. I think it hits the mark for families and for playing with kids. For adults, I think it's a little bit lackluster. So there you go. 
If you enjoyed this review, oh, and the components. I wish that, yeah, I mentioned it. I wish some things were smaller, or the board was bigger, or something in the middle, or maybe they just fixed the graphic design so the, the tile spaces were a little bit bigger, so you can see the outline definition of them a little bit better, or, or something like that. But there you go. Ghost of the Moor from Tasty Mystical Games. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what's the most annoying thing about where you live. Me personally, oh man, was, oh yeah, here you go. The electricity in my house is terrible. I go through like, I'm not exaggerating. I have, let's see, I have one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven working lights in my basement for the most part. For the most part. And I probably go through two light bulbs a month. I swear, my electricity just eats these things. It doesn't matter if they're expensive light bulbs or the spirally white bulbs or the LED light saving and the save the world light bulbs, these huge mammoth light bulbs, they all go bad after about a month or two. So I've just resorted to buying the cheapest light bulbs I possibly could find because they're all gonna die eventually. Just because, I, I don't know, the electricity in my house is all weird and wonky. Uh, so yeah, that that is super annoying. But let me know in the comments below. What's the most annoying thing at your house? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.